Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Ingus and I'm from IGS Electronics and today we're going to continue with our FXS3U analog card where in this video we are going to be checking out how to set the card up inside the PLC, how to read the, uh, read the values and pretty much go through inside the manual, see how uh, things are working or what the uh, auxiliary relays we need to use and why and why we, uh, where to read the data from and how to transfer from point to point and sort of manipulate the data with our process meter as well. So if you have missed the last video where we uh, did go through the set that actually adding the card into the PLC and also doing all the wiring and, and talking about the wiring and the voltage and currents and things like that and how we wired were basically wired it in our uh, fluke process meter definitely check that video out in the description below so without further ado let's get started <music> Here we go, ladies and gentlemen, there we are. The first thing we are going to be looking at is a actual manual itself. So, uh, if you see down here, it's a sort of a breakdown. This manual is basically, by the way, it's called Analog Control Edition. It's quite an old edition. We sort of, uh, sort of explains to you how to get your analog cards going. And as you can see, the first one is FX3U4AD. I haven't seen many of these around. I don't think many people use them. But mostly everybody is going to ADT version of it, so that's what they call the ADT uh, version of it. And um, so yeah, it, it, this one is set up much more different than uh, this one. This one sort of already has a assigned registries for it, so uh, the special data registries are, are done for it. And this one you have to set up yourself. So uh, the one we are using today is FX3U4AD. ADP channel so definitely go on that one this is where you're going to be obtaining all of your necessary information and the first thing always I check it out on your card and uh, make sure that your PLC is first of all is compatible so you can see down there all it is and it tells you as you can see down there only one AD, AD, ADP unit can be connected to FX3 series so for my PLC I can only add a one and then it says fx3g and fx3u sort of gives you a sort of outline what can you do and this is what it, more or less what it looks like and it sort of uh, tells you how to uh, switch things on and off in here but for that one we're going to crack on for the next page so uh and uh well, let's do that and Let's get back to the it sort of goes through a bit more data in here, how to connect, how to wire, the range, and so on, what you can do, what you what is not, the accuracies and things like that. So we just keep going for a and this is where the terminal layout and it gives you sort of understanding of how the wiring would work. So yeah, it's just a, a channel in blah blah blah. And then uh, obviously it's going to tell you in here, I can't remember where it was, what to do with uh, if you want to use it for the current. So yeah, as you can see down there, it shows you in here, what is it showing now? It shows you in here if the current input is uh, selected, so you need to make sure that, that there's a link between I and a V. And even tells you in here, if a current input is selected, be sure to short the line uh, between the uh, V plus terminal and I plus a terminal so make sure that's that the case I do follow these little digits in here use the two course shield the twisted pair cable for the analog input line so yeah it sort of gives you sort of outline what to do and what not to do so uh, as you've done that then you are ready to start understanding these data and so it's a list of special de devices this is where you're going to be able to understand what is what it sort of gives you a list what is uh, switches input modes and things like that we're gonna get to that one in a manual in in a PLC in a minute. Uh, the actual GX works. There's a special registers, a special auxiliary relays, and uh, this for should tell you in a minute. Not in here. So uh, if you can see in here, switching uh, off a uh, input mode. Uh, uh, the the one thing is that you need to make sure what. Uh, PLC you're using and what uh, auxiliary relays has been assigned for switching so you can see for my FX3 series this is my because uh, I, I can only add a uh, only one card so it's, it's assigned me a uh, M8280 all the way to M2, uh, M8283 
to turn uh, between input uh, between voltage and a current so i'll show that in the in a, in a, in a system in a manner so basically using these switches you need to make sure uh, tell the uh, tell the plc what are you actually reading is it a voltage or is it a current so make sure this 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 is get this gets done once we get going and also if you go down here there is as well the special registers where already has been all pre-programmed and done for you where the data is already getting transferred and this is where you can this is where it pretty much stores that data so that data the whole readout is going to be under the the first channel is going to be d8280 so uh this is pretty much what we're going to be looking at today so and this is it gives you a small in uh, program in here what uh can you do to get yourself going so basically you need to you need to have two data registers we haven't done that in the plc training data registers yet but uh, we will uh, definitely do that very very soon that's why th this video is made because we're going to be starting to get into analog uh, signal training so uh here we go so that's how pretty much uh, how you uh, navigate through manual and obviously each card has its own uh, section so do uh, check it out uh, we will be checking out actually all of them so uh, as we progress with the wiring and uh, setting up so uh, definitely stick around for that uh, in the coming future so let's remove that and let's get into gx works 2. let's open up a new program fix to you and here we are in so the first thing we need to do is go back to the manual we need to tell a r go on here. Uh, what are we uh, the, the, the plc what are we going to be reading and and here we need to say we're going to be using channel one so this is what represents channel one and it tells you we're going to be using current so we need to make sure that m8280 is turned on so that's the first thing we're going to do so um it's uh always Close contact, so and oh, M8000. And we are going to be using a coil M8280. So here we go, and that way now PLC knows that e, we are working with current. Current, current, uh, I don't know how to say that probably. And uh, right, and what are we going to be reading from? So, uh, so if you look at the manual we are at the information that is being uh, sent and uh, translated to digital values are happening in data uh, data d8280 pretty much represents the same value in here so what we're going to do we're going to use again the m8000 and we're going to be using a, a move instruction or a function and for that uh, about that we're going to be talking about a lot lot deeper into the uh, training videos so in this one it's just a demonstration purposes so we need application instructions so we're going to say move and we need to say what where we're moving it from so it's going to be d eight thousand two hundred and eighty this is where our value is being stored and where we're moving it and let's just say to d one why not so now that value is going to be moved into d1 and by the way those values in it which i'm going to show you in a minute so let's go online and write this to the plc plc is on so here we go come on that's done that's done and done let's go into monitor mode as you can see my value at the moment if you uh, haven't watched the last video do definitely do so so you understand what that uh, uh, screen in here uh, what that uh, screen down there does so this is pretty much our sensor and it's basically we are simulating a sensor where we are sending a current uh, via the fluke meter so as you can see at the moment at four milliamps just, that's what we're reading and uh, the four milliamps in plc is zero and that's what this value is so let's see what happens if we jump one if we jumped a uh, a point of a one of a um, milliamp it can even go to even smaller but it's not going to be registered much as you can see it if you go to point uh, 11 it will say 11 so sort of a representing 
one to one pretty much well not one to one but it's like one to hundred i think yeah that's why it works at one to hundred so and if you go the full that will be as you can see it is a 1600 so now these are and now the, the, the four to uh, uh, 20 milliamp has been pretty much translated into some form of digital values and this is the values you can see in here and you can do whatever you please with the values because they work the same as the accounting values same as the timer values and any other values they just now you can uh, uh, use them to switch things on and off and blah blah, blah. we're going to be looking into that a lot a lot more deeper into future and by the way this way is the best way to sort of test your analog cards if you are working in the process and want to know make sure the analog cards are working correctly this is the good way of doing it and again check out the last video how that works and if you see in here we we are on a maximum but we need probably not even a maximum we are uh, as I see the digits are jumping around so that's that's when you are trying to have a stable value uh, that's no good so we need to sort of deal with that one and for that one we need to go and work with a uh, thing like data register d8284 where the average time for the channel one can be set what does that mean so basically when we move the time a value which is you can see in here which we can we can set uh, i believe k1 i believe uh, k1 stands for 100 milliseconds it doesn't really indicate it but we assume that that stands at uh, 100 milliseconds in that 100 millisecond window it will uh, take average well if you, you can select any but uh, it will take the average uh, which collect all the numbers and it only output the average number the, the the only one digit from the averaging window so uh so i'm gonna show that in a minute so uh, this is how you pretty much uh, perform you have to use move uh, move a function for it so this is exactly what we are going to do so we're gonna have another uh m8000 uh contact so and then we're going to be using a move instruction so we can say move and then we say i say in our case let's use uh, it is down to you whatever the application do how long what kind of sampling window it's just like a sampling window so uh what sort of window you want to work with i'll, I'll just can put that k20 which uh, k20 and where do one we want that k20 to go into and uh and we're going to say in a d uh 8,284 that will be for our channel one corresponding to this guy in here so once we do that as you can see now it will uh, it will uh, use that uh, sampling window to collect this data from here whatever's going on in here it will use this sampling window to output whatever the average is going to be in that sample window so uh you can see that in a minute let's uh, load that to the plc There we go. So let's go into monitor mode. As you can see now, the the D eight thousand two hundred eighty four is using a K uh, uh, two hundred two or twenty times hundred milliseconds to assume, and that sampling window it has worked out that one to one thousand two hundred is the value that is average in that sample window. And that's how you would stabilize your uh jumping around some uh, some sensors would jump around too much and you don't want these things to happen as you can see if we are in a look at that in a, in this uh when it is maximum looks like the in a sample window in my sample window the average value was 1599 and it will stay like that all the time because they will constantly use that and the lower it goes the smaller the sample window there's a possibility of jumping around again very much depending on what sort of sense your applications and things like that. this the sampling window could determine exactly what you want to read out so that is it ladies and gentlemen this is how you set up a wire and uh, read the values from a uh, fx3 youth adt analog input card and so hopefully that is sort of giving you a good understanding where you're at and how to set up and how to test your uh, 
values and uh, how to work with your values and uh, that'll be it for this and uh, we are definitely gonna be working on all other cards in a future so definitely just stick around for that so other than that ladies and gentlemen if you like that video please smash that like if you didn't smash this like comment below and uh, any questions uh, you want to ask ask them in the description below and answer uh, no description below in the comments below and i'll answer them as soon and as quick as i can on that thank you very much for watching and i will see you in the next video